Hello YouTube, uh, this video is a free extract from my larger course called Premiere Pro Advanced. Uh, if you do wanna go further with Premiere Pro, check out the full course, the link will be in the description. All right, let's get going. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Walzer Scott and I'm an award-winning Adobe Certified Instructor and this is the Premiere Pro Advanced course. So this course is aimed at people who already know the fundamentals of Premiere Pro. It's for those of you who have your ways of working but know that there are so many tools, updates and time-saving techniques that you just haven't had time to explore yet. If that all sounds familiar, this course is for you. We'll start with the best productivity hacks and all the little known features to super speed your timeline editing. We'll dive into color management, exploring color grading, color replacement, and skin tone correction. You'll master all the new Lumetri color methods and harness the power of scopes. You'll learn new ways to pull off traditional and new style transitions. You'll become a master at fixing shaky handheld and drone footage and there won't be anything you can't mask or blur. We'll get your computer running super speedy with proxies, scratch disks, and cache management. You'll master high frame rate footage so that you can get spectacular slow motion. You'll easily create high quality professional motion graphics and data-driven infographics, and multicam editing will be a breeze. You'll learn amazing ways to clean up your audio, removing hiss, noise, and echo, plus markers, subtitles, plugins. And lastly, you'll learn all the tricks and settings to get the most from your rendering in both Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder. So those are the highlights of what we cover in the course. We do cover a lot more. Check out the contents and also check out the student reviews and you will see we cover a lot in this course and we will get you from Premiere Pro good Premiere Pro great. In the course, you'll use lots of real world practical examples with exercise files that you can download and play along with me. So if you can't remember the last time you sat down, went through all the features and all the upgrades in Premiere Pro, let this course be your all-in-one professional development and upgrade. You owe it to yourself, you really do. So sign up and go from good to a Premiere Pro superhero. With like a cape, we could be saving edits from evil baddies. We should totally get capes. All right, I'll see you in class, sign up. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first things first, download the exercise files. Um, they're pretty big, so be careful where you download them. They're about a gigabyte. There'll be a link on this page here for them. So download those before we get started. Next question to answer, Mac or PC? I'm gonna use Mac through this course, because that's what I use, but you can use Mac or PC throughout this course. The shortcuts are a little different, but I'll mention them as I go through, and some of the codecs are slightly different, uh, Mac versus PC, but I'll mention those throughout. So either either is fine. I talk really fast. You know that already. <laughs> uh, but you can slow me down on all the videos. You'll see in this big player here, uh, down here, I think down, down over, yeah, down over here, there'll be a, like a cog or some sort of like one times, two times, and you can slow me down, okay, to 0.75. I sound a smidgy bit drunk, but if you, maybe English is not your first language or I just, <laughs> I talk with a funny accent, so you can slow me down. I do try and slow myself down, I will try. But sometimes that's a complaint from people, so yeah, slow me down to uh, inebriated Dan, and you do get used to me speaking a bit slowly. All right, let's talk HD versus uh, 4K, or full HD versus UHD. Like, uh, a lot of the exercise files in this course are just the smaller, uh, ratio, the kind of full HD, not because I like working that way. I'm mainly working in 4K now. I'm kind of transitioning across, but it's to keep the file sizes not ginormous. Um, they really balloon if they all like amazing resolution 4K. And not everybody that is doing this course has got an amazing laptop. Mine's pretty good, so it runs it, but a lot of people are using older, crappier laptops. Uh, so yeah, note that um, some of the exercise uh, that we do Okay, and we're gonna do color correction and stuff. We're working on footage that might not be the best. You're gonna get better results is kind of what I'm saying from your own raw footage where my stuff had to be to shrink down a little bit to make it work for everybody and so that the exercise files aren't huge. 
There are a couple of little topics that I cover again here in the advanced course that was from the Premier Pro Essentials course. So if you have done that course, uh, think of it as like a recapping and becoming better because you could <laughs> repeat it. Now, I've made sure that there are only a couple little topics and whenever I do talk about them, I make sure that, that I build on that knowledge so there's extra bits to make you more awesome. But there are a couple of little teeny tiny repeats. This next bit is optional. Uh, when we're opening up Premiere Pro, uh, if you want yours to look like mine or you're having some issues with it, we're gonna reset all our preferences when we open it up so you don't have to do this. Uh, I like to do it at the beginning of the course so that we all match. Um, so before opening up the program, hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. On a PC, uh, often you can find it in the kind of like Start menu down here and just hold that down before you start. On a Mac, mine is in the dock. It doesn't matter where you find it in the Applications folder. Hold that key down, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, and click that, and it will reset your preferences while you're doing it. You can let go when this appears. I kind of hate doing it because I get my preferences perfect, but I gotta make a course and I gotta show you how to get them perfect as well. Well, the way you like them. Click OK. Um, one little extra bit is that if you hold down the uh, that first key that I said, so Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and Shift, that'll do like even a bigger refresh. It'll get rid of things like cache from your plugins. And if you only do that, if you're having issues of and you're like, man, Premiere Pro doesn't work very well anymore. Try doing that, it's kind of a fresh restart. But know that all your preferences that you change, uh, workspaces, all that sort of good stuff, shortcut keys have all been reset and come back to normal. So be careful, but yeah, don't be afraid, let's do it. One last thing before we get started is that you'll find some footage, okay, that I'm using in this course won't have a watermark and you'll open up your version. You'll be like, hey, mine's got a watermark. Um, that's because Edit Stock has graciously let us use some of their footage okay, for this course. Um, you can totally use it in your portfolio and things as long as you leave the watermark there. Um, but if you do want to, let's say you do put some effort into one of these projects uh, you and you want to remove the watermark, you can go and purchase the footage okay, from editstock.com okay, and you'll find it in here. They're about $50 or $60, uh, so really reasonable. This place here is a really great place to find footage so that you can build portfolio pieces uh, from raw footage that you didn't have to shoot yourself. And there's a really amazing selection here. So documentaries, commercials, music videos, sports, I'm reading out the list there. <laughs> okay, I've used it all the time to really help kind of find different stuff. You're like, if you don't have multicam and you really wanna practice with it, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, there's just all sorts of other types of footage that you can use to practice, craft portfolio pieces. Yeah, check out Edit Stock. All right, that is it. Let's go into some actual courses. Let's learn something. All right, we're gonna start this course by learning what proxies are. Uh, it's pretty heavy going for the first video, I understand, but it's kind of fundamental to what we need to do. So first up, what are proxies? They're placeholders. It's so that your original footage that you've shot or somebody's given to you, that's super big quality, high quality, and it's stressing your machine out. It's either really big, it's using a codec that your computer doesn't like. There's lots of different reasons that, you know, this footage is just very hard to edit. So a proxy basically is a duplicate and it's just smaller and less quality so that you can edit it quickly, add your effects, you can do everything to it, okay? And what happens is when you hit render, it'll go back to, instead of using the proxy, it'll go back to the original footage so that when it's rendering, it's actually rendering the super duper, <laughs> super duper high quality stuff and not your proxy. It's just like this kind of like little bit of form, a uh, little file that you can use so that your machine doesn't die or melt. Uh, but you start with great footage, you'll end up with great footage. Does that make sense? Do you have to use proxies if you're gonna be an advanced Premiere Pro user? You don't have to, you should understand them, but like a lot of the time I'm not using proxies mainly because I shoot for YouTube, so when I shoot on my camera, I make sh I shoot in H.264 because I don't need the amazing color depth and you know it's not going out to the cinema or broadcast or a TV show. So I shoot in a format that's pretty lightweight, still 4K, okay, and I can get away with this particular laptop not using proxies. But as soon as somebody sends me some, you know, Apple ProRes or kind of GoPro Cineform, then it's all about the proxies because Poor old laptop here is not made for that heavy duty workload. So let's actually make some proxies instead of just talking about them. 
All right, this video is just setting up a project. Uh, I do throw some tips and tricks in here, so skip it at your peril. Uh, but really, if you're just looking for proxies, jump to the next video. All right, let's set up this project and I will share a couple of tiny little goodies in here with you. All right, so let's get started by importing our footage. So new project, file, new project, or click the button. Uh, ours is called Tourism Island Road Rising. It's a campaign we're gonna work on. I'm gonna browse and I'm gonna put it inside of my exercise files, which is on my desktop, inside Tourism Island, and let's all put it inside project files. That's my file structure that I use quite often. Okay, great for small projects. Uh, audio, footage, project files is all my After Effects in Premiere Pro. That's where I'm gonna put this. And click OK, and we've got our project. Let's import all of our files, so let's go Double click import media. Okay, and I'm gonna go inside Tourism Island and I wanna bring in audio, footage, and graphics. Okay, I'm holding the command key down to select all of those in uh, on a Mac. You use control on a PC. Let's click import. I like to switch mine to this view here, list view. Okay, that's the way I like to work. It's up to you. Okay, and there's all our footage. Now let's create a sequence from this all. Let's uh, select everything but Z, I don't want Z. Uh, so all I did was click the first one, hold shift, click on D, okay? And I should be able to select them all, drag them into the sequence. It'll create a sequence plus add them all to the timeline. Okay, so it's a great way of getting started. And um, one thing you might not notice, a little bonus tip as we go along is when you add all of that sort of stuff, and um, you notice it's A, B, C, D, and that doesn't always work, okay? It comes down to a couple of things. A, if you've ordered by name or frame rate, okay? It'll, whatever the frame rate is or media stuff, whatever you ordered your footage by, it will use that as the kind of first to last, okay? And also if you are by name, um, it is still A, B, C, but if I select D first, so let's undo this um, I'm undoing, so I select D first, I've got ordered by name, select D first, hold shift, click A. Because I did it that way around, watch what happens when I create the sequence. You end up with D first, I don't know. <laughs> that was confusing for me for a long time. You can use it to your power, okay? So it just makes sure you're a selected name and you're reordered nicely. Uh, so that works for me, except I wanna start with A to D. Let's do that. We can leave Z off for the moment or just delete it off the end. Let's rename our sequence. This one's called uh, Tourism Island. This is our, our road rising 30 seconds um, version. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of different sizes, but that's our 30 second version. Exciting. Now I'm inside of footage. I'm gonna drag it just to the left. If you ever wondered how to like reorder that stuff? It can be a bit annoying. Just drag it to the left and it will come out. I might, if I was having lots of different, like a social media project, I'd probably have another bin, okay, or folder that was with our sequences, but I'm just gonna leave mine sitting out here. So we've got to here, now we're like, oh, it's playing okay on my computer, okay. Uh, it's, it's not playing okay. <laughs> it's because I got the screen recorder on. It's not even trying, look at it, it's real time. So this is a really good example uh, I was gonna have to fake it, but I don't. Turn screen recording software on and try and edit 4K footage. And it's just too jumpy. You can get away with this. Okay, you can go, let's go one quarter. Okay, you're like, yeah, it's doing it, okay. But even then, sometimes if the codec is not right, your computer just won't like it. If it's on full or on a quarter, you know, a 16th, it won't do it. So I'm gonna put mine on half. So how do we make a proxy? Hey, in this video, we are gonna create our proxies. We're gonna use method number one. I call this the afterthought method. This is when you've got them all on the timeline and things are running slowly and you think, ugh, I better make some proxies. Okay, what are proxies again? I'll show you an actual example of what we're gonna make in this video. Proxies on, proxies off. It just makes a low quality version. Let's look at it at full view. You can't even tell from this distance away, but it makes your editing a whole lot faster and you end up with a bunch of files that look like this original files, and then some proxy files that are smaller and easier for your machine to handle. All right, let's make them. All right, now that we know what a proxy is, creating one's really easy. Okay, so I've got a, I've got our sequence here. Actually, you don't need a sequence. You just need to have a project and have footage in it. Okay, so I'm going to, you can do one at a time or select them all, right click any of them, go to proxy, create proxies, easy. Okay, and you can decide from the format I'm on a Mac, so I can use QuickTime, and maybe you prefer using ProRes or Cineform, one of the kind of, like it's definitely gonna lower the resolution or the um, the pixel height and width. Okay, so this is 4K. This will make it, let's say I always use 
uh, H.264 because it's quick and easy and the computer can run it. Okay, and uh, low, I think is 540 pixels across. Okay, this one here is kind of standard uh, SD and this is HD. Okay, so this is 720 and this is full HD and this is 1080p. Okay, you can decide the kind of sizes you want to use. Mm, pick medium. If you're running on a really bad laptop and it's terrible, okay, pick low. It's up to you. Okay, so you can go through and create ingest presets. We'll look at that later in the class, but for the moment, we'll just use the drop downs. Now, this does tend to change every time there's a new version of Premiere Pro, but there'll be a high, low, medium <laughs> version of this, so you can play around with it. I'm just going to plop it next to my original footage. I'm going to click OK, and Media Encoder is going to open up in a second. I think. There it is. I wish they called proxies placeholders. They seem less scary. Proxies seem, I don't know, technical. All right, here's Media Encoder. I kind of caught it in the act. It was just running in the background. <laughs> I didn't notice it. And here it is. It's making all of these. Can you see it's kind of underscoring it with proxy? And I'll go show you the actual files that it's making. All right, here it is. So this is my exercise files on my desktop. And you'll find my tourism island. Okay, and all my footage is inside of footage. And there's a proxy folder. I've got the same name except the hyphenated proxy. And you can see they're a lot smaller. Okay, I've already cut mine down to a small size. So let's pretend that was like 500 megabytes and it's down to 14 instead of just 13, because I already did some uh, file savings to make this course run nice. So it's not as dramatic here in this course uh, as it will be for your work. Now, what happens in Premiere Pro? Nothing's happened, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Proxies are kind of happening in the background, but you're not actually using them yet. So if I play, it's still going to have an issue. Is it? It's only on half and it's still having an issue. Cool, so to turn proxies on, you need to go to this mad button over here. I don't know why they hide some buttons in here. The button editor. Click on that little option. This pops up and then you're like, what do I do with this? What you do is you click hold and you want to looking for the proxy guy. That's in there. It's a little, it looks like that. <laughs> click hold and drag it and drag it down to here. Okay, click OK. And now you've got this little proxies off. Oh, proxies are on now, so low quality. High quality, low quality, high quality. Let's have a little look at it so that you, well, I can show it to you. So I'm gonna use my tilde key again. Okay, the little squiggly thing to make it nice and full. And I'm going to zoom right in. Okay, so proxies, it's not the best footage I know to start with. Again, just so file sizes are low. Um, but let's look at this. Proxies, not proxies, proxies, not proxies. So that's what it does. It just creates a placeholder. Okay, that's lower quality. Okay, so that you can, from this view out, it's really hard to tell, okay, um, that anything's changing. But your machine, okay, with it on, blue's good if you want to use proxies, okay, that when it's playing, it's going to play back nicely, nice and fast, because it's using really low stuff. If you're finding that the medium still isn't working for you, go to low, okay, and it's going to look even worse, but it's going to play back nicely. So what happens when you... I don't know. Is it your first question? It's my first question. Like, what happens when I'm color grading? Just turn it off. Turn it off. And when you're doing your color grading, do it to the color grading, and then turn it back on to do your flowy editing awesomeness. All right, so I've made my proxies, and I can turn them on and off now. Okay, but when I hit render, okay, I've done my editing. It's great. I hit render. It's always going to use my high-quality version, not my proxy. They're just like intermediary things. All right, let's jump in the next video. We're going to look at, I don't know, I call it premeditated proxies. Proxies for professionals when you're actually doing it on purpose rather than just kind of like, oh no, my laptop's dying. I need to do something about it. Okay, we're going to look at something called ingesting. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about the strange word ingest and ingest and copy. Okay, basically all it means is when I drag my raw footage or import it into my project, automatically without me right clicking and doing anything fancy, Media Encoder is going to automatically ingest okay, the footage and make a proxy. We'll also show you that uh, if you're importing from, say, a camera, you can actually copy the file across onto your local drive and make a proxy at the same time. Let's talk about ingesting. All right, first up, let's close the project that we created in the last video, and we're going to create a new project. 
So technically this is where you should talk about ingesting, okay, right at the beginning of a project. You can do it afterwards, I'll show you how, but you do it at this new project window. Okay, so we're gonna give this a name, this is gonna be my uh, test project, because I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go back to the other one. Um, I got my test project, where is it gonna go? I'm gonna stick it onto my desktop. Actually no, I'll stick it back in that same folder. Okay, and this bit, ingest settings. Okay, you might not ever have been in here. Okay, so click on ingest, and I'm gonna say ingest these videos. I would like, when you do ingest them, <laughs> ingesting is a is a terrible word. <laughs> that just means bringing them into Premiere Pro, importing. When I import these, okay, I want you to create a proxy. What kind of proxy? Okay, we're gonna use H.264. Yours are gonna be different in here because you might be on a PC, so you're unlikely to have ProRes, and also you might be in the future. They, they change these um, presets all the time. I'm gonna use, just for in this case, H.264, okay, low res proxy, and it's gonna put it in the same place as my project. Okay, a lot of the same stuff that we looked at before. The difference is the word ingest, okay? And what happens is when I click okay, nothing really is different. It's when I go to the importing, I'm just gonna double click down in my project. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the exercise files, Torresmyland, let's bring in, let's bring in the whole folder. What did we do before? We did, I'll just bring in the footage this time. Click import, and what's gonna happen is, here it is there. Hello guys, it's all there. What's different? Okay, what's happening in the background is that it is busy creating proxies. Okay, so um, it's opening up my media encoder. Okay, so where's media encoder? There it is there. They're all being added to it automatically. I'm not doing anything. It's created a proxies folder in there and eventually it will say something like, uh, oh actually, I just normally wait for media encoder to do its thing. You can be a bit fancier and right click in this metadata here and go to metadata display. At the top here, type proxy. There it is there, I've already turned mine on. Yours will be off, turn it on, click OK. And along, you can scrub along here. Should be somewhere, Should be yours should be at the end, because I've moved mine, where's mine? <laughs> Come on, there it is. See, offline, wait, attached. It's gonna do the last one. Okay, so you, if this is really important or you're doing a huge amount and you can't see media, I don't know why you turn it on. It's an advanced class, we're learning advanced stuff. There is a proxy tab, okay, and you can just drag it along if it's really important, okay, to the front. They're all attached. So that's the difference. Ingesting just means uh, instead of me right clicking and saying make proxies, is every time I bring something in, just make a proxy based on that preset. So you, as the lonely editor, can just work on whatever comes in here and you don't have to worry about kind of doing proxies every single time. So a couple of things to consider when you are doing proxies. The first one is, uh, let's say that I don't do it at that file new project. I always forget. <laughs> or I don't know that I need it because the project's not gonna, you know, I assume it's gonna be fine and then the computer starts running slow. So you can do this in just afterwards. So let's close down this current one. We're, we're all very good about it. Let's go back to that original one where we didn't turn on ingesting in that new window, okay? So we did this manually. Let's say that we're gonna import a bunch more footage. We can turn it on now by going to project settings, okay? So it's under file and there it is there, project settings and general scratch disk ingest. We're gonna go to ingest. It opens up that first screen again, back to where we were Okay, but for this one, we're gonna say you, you, create proxies, back to where we were, same as project. Okay, so that's how you can turn it on afterwards. Now, if I import footage into my project, it will automatically make those proxies. One other thing to consider when you are dealing with proxies is where they end up. Okay, this project here is gonna work great because it's uh, same as project, and my project is saved on my local machine, on my laptop. Okay, you might be working off an external drive or some sort of like, network attached storage or some sort of RAID fancy hard drive thing, okay, you want to not save it with your project if you are saving onto that network drive. It is faster for Premiere Pro to read it off the local drive. So you might say, instead of same as project, choose location and put it on your documents, okay, or on your desktop or something that is local to your machine, it'll run faster. The last thing that is pretty useful is under here, there's one called copy and create proxies. You can just use copy, copy is kind of cool, but let's explore this one here. Okay, so we know what proxies are, but copy and create proxies is pretty cool. So what it means is I often, like I've got my uh, mirrorless camera here that I do a lot of my recording on. 
SDK and it's got its own like little SD card. So instead of copying it off the SD card to my machine and then creating proxies, what you can do is both of those at the same time. Okay, there'll be other use cases where you need to copy as well as create proxies, but let's say I'm gonna copy things off my hard drive as well as, um, so primary destination, this is like where my footage is gonna go. So I'm gonna choose my location, I'm gonna say where it copies them off, it's gonna go into my case, my footage folder, please. So copy them off my uh, camera, put them into my amazing file structure, and the proxies can go in the same place, or they might go somewhere else. Okay, so copying them off that hard drive, okay, which in my case is off my camera, and make a proxy at the same time. Now let's give it a test run. So let's uh, plug the camera in. So there's my camera, okay, untitled one, very good. Okay, and under this crazy directory structure is all the clips. And let's say that this is something that I've recorded. Okay, I wanna bring it into my clip. It is both gonna import it, which is cool. It's also gonna copy it off my camera. And let's have a little look. And uh, let's go back to my Premiere Pro. Let's go to my, let's go back to my exercise files. Let's go to Tourism Island. There's uh, my footage folder. And look, there it is there. It's being copied off. It's taken a while. It's pretty big. And, wow, well, it's pretty big. <laughs> but it's being copied off. Okay, and then hopefully a media encoder at that same time is busy encoding it. All right, so here's the file, the big version that's been copied off my camera onto my hard drive. And my proxy didn't end up in the right place. That was my fault. <laughs> you probably saw it while I was doing it. Okay, remember under file, project settings, ingest settings, I said same as project. So I this hap I, I guess I leave this in because this happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh, what's wrong? Because <laughs> I forgot to change that. You'll do it. Uh, so mine are in where my project file is. So under my exercise files, tourism island, project files. There's my proxy just lying about in there. I end up with all of them in here. <laughs> okay, so hey ho, that's it. But let's actually talk about some of these presets because there are presets built into here. It says it, it's a preset. So let's say you want to change your preset. There's kind of like two parts to it. And what I'll do is I'll carve it out into the next video. See you in a sec. Hey there, uh, mild interruption to your YouTube viewing. I just wanted to make sure if you enjoying this, how are you finding it so far? I want to check on you. Uh, if you are enjoying it, uh, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, also remember that this is a small part of a larger course. It's actually the first 16 videos of 141 videos that is the uh, Premiere Pro Advanced course. So uh, click the link up here or the link in the description if you do want to do that full course. Otherwise, continue with the course. Bye. Welcome back. Uh, in this one, we're going to make an ingest preset. And it's kind of two parts. You make... Uh, we know what a proxy is, okay? And we know what ingesting is. So what we're gonna do is create both a preset for what we want our proxies to be, okay? It's called an encoding preset, okay? We want the proxies to be a certain kind of format and a certain size. And we're gonna learn about, uh, if you don't already know, a really great codec, okay? An intermediary codec for proxies called uh, Apple ProRes. And also we're gonna look at how to do an ingest preset, which is pretty quick which is basically just applying that new proxy encoding format to our files. We need to do both. Did that explain it? I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's jump into the class and hopefully I can explain it better as we go. Actually, before we get started as well, we're gonna learn how to put a word on our proxies to make it a bit more obvious. We've been looking at the blue button down there. It's hard to know that it's on. <gasps> Look, proxy, proxy text, making it a little bit more clearer. All right, now let's start. Okay, first up, I've opened up Adobe Media Encoder. Okay, so what we're looking for is down in Preset Browser here, this plus button. If you can't see it, go to Window, open up Preset Browser. Okay, so there's two options here, encoding preset and an ingest preset. Remember, encoding is kind of what the proxies are going to look like. Okay, the quality, the size, um, and in just presets is kind of more the file management side. So you can do one, you know, you can just jump straight to the ingest if you are happy with those presets that were originally in preset, uh, in Premiere Pro in the last video. Um, we'll do both of them. You have to do the encoding first, okay, if you are gonna do it. So let's look at that. So this encoding preset is going to be called, Dan, I always, I don't know why. It's very, I wanted something very obvious compared to the other presets. Um, so this one is my Dan, it is 720p. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, okay, than my original footage. I'm gonna use Apple ProRes, okay. Um, if I can type it out, there you go. 
And what I like to do is write proxy at the end <laughs> in capital letters. Just, this is not, you can use this same uh, encoding preset here for your export. I don't want to use this for export, it's just kind of like my working files. Okay, so in the format, okay, it'd be really common to use the QuickTime, okay, and it would be really common to use ProRes 244 for a proxy. Why not my H.264 with the MP4s? Because it makes the file sizes really small, right? Well, your computer, you know, Premiere Pro finds it really hard to work with those uh, that codec H.264. Yes, it makes the file size really small, okay, but it's compressed so much that the editor, which is Premiere Pro, finds it hard to work and edit that file. Whereas QuickTime um, and this codec, okay, ProRes 244, okay, 422, is even file size is larger, but it is an accessible codec. You, my computer with my hardware and the software really likes editing it, even though it's bigger. Strange. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for my proxy preset. Okay, and I'm going to go into video and I'm going to go down here. You can't change the quality for ProRes. Okay, the data rates are fixed. Um, we don't want to compress it. Okay, but what we might do is the height and width. Okay, we might say, well, we might say, I'm definitely going to do this. 720 is the height. I want it to be smaller so that it runs faster. Now, what else would I change in terms of my proxies? Nothing. It's small. It's a good, easy codec. And um, the one thing you might do though is under effects, okay, and come down to. I want to add a name overlay to my proxies, okay, and I'm going to say prefix and suffix only, okay, and it's just going to add text over the top of my video to say proxy, proxy. And it's yeah, it's just going to add text to the center, to the top left, to the bottom right. I'm going to put it into the top left. Okay, you can offset it and play around with the size and stuff once you've done a little test. But let's click OK and I'll show you what that does. Let's yeah, click OK. All right, so we've created our encoding preset for proxies. Okay, now let's talk about the ingest. Okay, you can jump straight to ingest if you like. If you like, actually, I'm happy with the presets that Premiere Pro give us. I'm that person. Okay, but this is advanced and we need to see how to do it all. Okay, let's create an ingest preset. Okay, this is where you definitely might go and change and create your own. I'm gonna call mine my Dan's ingest. Okay, uh, you might give it a project name or a client name or some sort of film documentary that you're working on. Okay, and I'm gonna say, um, it says transcode files to destination. What we're really meaning is uh, creating proxies. Transcoding is a word, if you're not sure, Kind of like a, creating a file, uh, kind of a transitional file, like an in-between file. That's what a proxy is. It's kind of like something that I'm working on. It's not what I started with, and it's not what I'm going to end up with. It's trans... what did I say? <laughs> it's a transition format. So transcoding just means I'm going to make this in-between format. What they really mean is proxies here. Where is it going to go? If you leave it blank, just leave it blank, because then every you know, every time you use this preset, it'll ask you where to go rather than forcing it to go somewhere. You can change that. What kind of format? We know that uh, QuickTime is better for our proxies. And there you go, right at the top there is the proxy that I made. Okay, you can use some of these other ones. Remember I said you don't have to create that encoding preset. Okay, it's kind of cool we've added that um, text over the top, so that might be worth just doing that. Okay, but you can see here is, you might just use that. Two, uh, four, uh, two, two proxy. Okay, it's a great, great preset already made. All right, that is it for our ingest and a lot going on there. Um, the weird thing now is ready for weirdness. Click OK. Okay, uh, Premiere Pro doesn't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so what we need to do is in Premiere Pro, we need to bring in our ingest preset. So we go, all right, uh, uh, file, project settings, ingest settings, and we're like, okay, great, where's the one I just made? Uh, copy and create, I'm just gonna go, instead of copying, I'm just gonna go create proxies, and I'm gonna say, let's use my preset that I just made. Where is that, where's my preset? Okay, so we can add a preset, okay, and then you get lost in the kind of wilderness of your computer. So how do we find it? It's a .epr, which is great, and um, what, the easiest way probably to find it is to go back into Media Encoder, okay, there's my ingest file, Media code knows where it is, so I can right click it and go to reveal yourself preset. Here you are. <laughs> it's in like crazy file format. Yours on a PC will be different, but use this method to find it. Copy and paste it somewhere you can find it nicely. What I'm, you know, you could just copy it to your desktop. 
I'm going to actually just select the name of it and copy the words from the name. And then Premiere Pro, I'm going to say, on my Macintosh HD, go and find that file, please. Kick back, relax. There it is there. However you get it in there, it only has to be done once now. Okay, so now it's a preset that I can use forever. It's going to bring in my proxies. It's going to turn them to Apple Pro Res 422. And it's going to put a watermark on them as well, which is cool. So let's actually go and do that. Uh, let's click OK. So I've got my ingesting turned on. Click OK. So I'm just going to drag a footage in. Um, where did I say it was going to go? I didn't tell anybody. Do it every time. I told you. Let's go to Project Settings, Ingest. When I do create my ones, put them, not the same as project, because it's go somewhere random. I'm going to put them in my exercise files, into my footage, and hopefully into proxies. Cool. All right, so let's drag something in. Let's find something random on the machine. And when I say random, we'll use something from the exercise files from a future part of this course. Let's grab mix butter. <laughs> okay, and I was going to drag it in. It's going to start generating my proxy in the background through Media Encoder. Oh, so fast. Good work. You can see it made it a dot .mov. Okay, MOV. And let's have a look at where it put it. Okay, so it put it inside my exercise files. I told it to go inside my footage. There it is, proxy. Okay, and let's have a little look at it. I'm going to both open it up on my finder. Let's have a look. Can you see it says proxy? It's a bit loud. Um, you can you can see there it's kind of burnt in a proxy. And where it's quite useful is let's say that I'm in Premiere Pro now. Okay, so I've brought it in. I'm going to edit. I'm going to create a sequence from it. There we go. Okay, and watch this. I'm doing it, and you're like, "Oh, where's that proxy thing gone? Didn't we just add that? Oh, remember our proxy switch? Proxy? Nope. <laughs> Wrong button. The one next to it. They look similar. Come on. Toggle proxies. On. Off. On, off. Okay, so it's a, a visual cue to know that you're working on those proxies. Remember in the earlier videos, we had to kind of zoom in to see the quality difference. Okay, if you do decide to use H.264 for your proxies. But now that we've learned about the uh, QuickTime Apple Pro Res 422, okay, my suggestion would be to use that for your proxies for now on. All right, so we know what a proxy is. We know how to ingest things, and we know how to make our own custom ingesting bits. And in our case, we used, uh, hey there, this video, we are going to look at what happens if you lose your proxies. You probably didn't lose them. You probably just inherited a project from somebody else or from an old computer, and it can't find the proxies. And there's lots of them, and they're going to take ages to remake. So we just want to relink them. It's super easy. Uh, right click one of them. You can see this proxy is offline. I can go to proxy. Mm -hmm. and go to attach proxies. There are a few other quirks that I'm going to go through in this video. You'll see it's not terribly long, so stick around, but that's the quick way. All right, let's get in there. All right, let's start with relinking proxies. Uh, this happens when somebody sends you a file. You know, you inherit a project and you've got the proxies, but Premiere Pro doesn't know where they are. So you'll know they're missing for a couple of ways. You'll open it up and say, I'm missing these files called underscore proxy. Okay, and you can go and find them now. That's probably the easiest way, but we know how to do that. Let's go to offline all, okay, and let's look in here. Now, let's do it within the program here. And how do I know my proxies are actually gone? Because they're, they're loading fine. It's because my actual raw footage is connected just fine, but my proxies aren't, okay? I know they're not connected because A, it told me when they opened them up. And also over here, if I turn this on and off, okay, it's not showing me a different size or a different quality. And in this case, actually, I turned that um, watermarked proxy on, so it's very obvious. Okay, so the other thing is, is that down the end here of my little program window, okay, can you see I turned, remember we turned on proxy in the last video? Maybe you can right click any of these titles here of the columns, go to metadata and type in proxy to turn that on. Turn a little tick on, scrub to the end, you can see they're all offline. Who oh, no. knew? Select them all. Right click them, and this is where it gets a little weird. Go to a proxy, and we're attached to the proxies, because they're missing. Okay, we can pick the first one, which is tourism A. Okay, but it's not looking for the underscore proxy now. It is, but it's not saying so. <laughs> it, this might change in the future. Uh, so click attach, and I don't want, I want to find the proxy. I know where they are, okay, because I found them, find them on my hard drive, and I moved them. So I know they're on my desktop under proxies, and I'm looking for this one here, tourism A underscore proxy. That was the one that was missing. Click OK, 
It's found them all automatically and hey, look, they're all attached. And I can tell they're attached because the word proxy is up the top there. Okay, we've now toggles on and off. All right, uh, mission complete. Proxies are reattached. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to look at how to export your proxies to kind of like final render. Okay, uh, there's lots of reasons why you might. I don't use them very often, but you might be adding some special magic to your proxies. Uh, they are smaller. Okay, maybe your rendering time is really long. Okay, uh, maybe you're adding LUTs or this kind of watermark and then you want to export that for the client. To do it, let's hit Command M on a Mac or Control M for Mary <laughs> on a PC. And down the bottom here, just make sure Use Proxies is turned on and it'll use the proxies that you've made. Remember, you might have added that watermark like we did, okay, in our proxies, or you might add like, you might have added like a LUT to all of your proxies or some sort of thing, and you just want to use those. Okay, tick that box, hit export, okay, and you will have ones that doesn't use your original files, okay, it uses those proxies that you've generated. All right, nice simple one. Let's get on to the next video. In all honesty, do I use it every single time? No. Media Browser is perfect when I am the both the videographer and the editor. Okay, so a lot of the time is that. If I am doing a really big project where I'm not the camera person and I'm just doing the editing, sure, that's a great way of doing it. If I'm just doing a small kind of social media video, nah, I just go straight to project and drag from my finder into here because often I'm dealing with stock images. There's not a lot of confusion about what kind of format it is, can it be read? So teeny tiny jobs, no, no Media Browser bigger jobs or stuff that I am filming myself, so I need to connect to my camera, Media Browser is great. All right, that's it. Let's hope they fix it. All right, first thing is I've just opened up and saved a brand new project. I called it Delete Me 01 because it's a, it's a throwaway project just to show you this feature. And I'm also gonna set to editing. We've been on a kind of a learning workspace. We're gonna go to editing. We'll go to window workspace editing. Okay, and we're gonna go to window workspace reset to save layout. So. Everything's the same and we've got a few more panels open by default. It's a good place to start. So the media browser is along the bottom here. Okay, you might be under window, then come down to media browser. So media browser is just a way of navigating your machine via Premiere Pro rather than your, in, on a Mac, uh, you know, it's called Finder and on a PC, it's called a window. Okay, so it's just a different way of doing it. It has some perks, let's talk about them. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is more like a have to get this set up to make media browser useful thing. Uh, so favorites, you need some favorites, because otherwise like the kind of way this works on this left hand side here, you can try and find your files by going all the way back to Macintosh HD, which is not great, because you've got to find users and uh, Daniel Scott and find your documents, okay, uh, on PC it's C drive and windows and final that. Up here it says users, okay, you can go to home directory. Okay, and on mine it's kind of gone to the right place. Okay, on PC I'm sure it'll look very similar. So I know that my documents that I'm gonna be working for, for this project, are on my desktop. Okay, and under exercise files and under tourism island and here's the footage that I wanna look at. Okay, actually, yeah, I'll do it straight to footage, probably. Okay, so what I wanna do is set up a favorite for it. So before I go into it, if you do go in, you can use this little arrow to come back out. Okay, go back out one, there it is there, footage. I'm gonna right click it and set it as a favorite. Now, instead of like this kind of crazy madness on the side here, you can go to the top here and you've got your footage. It's in your favorites, look at that, close that down, phew. Oh, tidy. The one thing to note about your favorites is that it's per project. So every time you start a new project, you're gonna to have to create a new uh, favorites, which is not a big drama. Um, just make sure you get a home directory and kind of start from there. A little bit easier. Okay, first perk is let's switch it from list view to thumbnail view. This is really handy. So the media browser, remember, we're not actually looking at stuff that's in my project yet. It's kind of like an in-between, okay, or before we get started, we can actually just kind of move our mouse. I'm not holding anything down. I'm just kind of like moving my mouse back and forth. Uh, and it will give me a little preview, which is super handy before I import to know which one, you know, might be the shot that I'm looking for. And when you do import it, let's say I drag it straight to the timeline to create a sequence and bring it in. What it does is it imports it in one foul swoop. Can you see it's in my, it's in here, it's created my uh, sequence, but it's gone straight to my project. I didn't have to like go file import. Okay, so 
Often what you'll end up doing is finding it on your Finder or in your Windows on a PC, finding it all, getting the right one, then going File Import, and then you know it, it saves a step. That's even more useful when you are looking at a camera that's connected to your computer. Okay, so I don't have anything at the moment, but let's say we go to our local drives. Okay, you might find your camera in here and you can preview this stuff on the camera, drag it onto your timeline or into the project window and it will import it at the same time. And again, you can combine that with the ingest that we did before. So it can bring it in, bring proxies. Ooh, Media Browser kind of adds that little extra level of professionalism. Another perk is actually I showed you you can kind of just hover and do it as well. You can click on them and you see you got a little scrubber to go back and forth rather than the kind of hand mouse waving hover. Okay, up to you. Uh, the other perk is you can actually look at them in the source monitor. So make sure your source monitor is open under window source monitor. Okay, and you can actually just drag them into here and preview them like full screen before importing them. You notice that I'm watching, uh, looking at Tourism B here and it's not actually part of my project yet. Just a way of kind of previewing it without actually dragging it into and importing it and then deciding you don't need it and then it's offline because you deleted it. I'm getting a bit, uh, <laughs> speaking from personal experience, it's nicer just to preview in Source Monitor before importing. Save some drama later on. So what else? Actually, the next thing I want to show you is kind of weird because it's broken. I'm going to leave it in this course because yours might still be broken. And if yours isn't and it's working perfectly, let me know via the Facebook group. Uh, it'll be up on the screen here. Just let me know that this rec this video, uh, link to it, that is ready to be re-recorded because it's all working again. So there's going to be a little bit of hand-waving, but it's if it's working on yours or it's fixed in the future, it's brilliant. Okay, so let's say that I've got a camera connected. So I'm going to go to my local drive where I have got a camera connected. This is my Canon. I have no name drive. Okay, but in here somewhere is my footage. I know it's in this one here. I'm going to right click it and say set to favorites. Okay, to favorites, which is handy. Okay, and I can go in here and this is really handy. We talked about it before. You can see stuff on your camera. But when it comes to working with your camera, like uh, my Sony, which for some reason is not connecting at the moment, which is another bug for Premiere Pro, bad Premiere Pro. Okay, but um, you can go up to filter and my one has a lot of XML files, okay? And I don't want to see those. I just want to see the video files. So you can go up to here and filter and say, just show me the video files, not the XML or, you know, just you can turn things on and off depending on how your camera shoots and what extra files that it brings along. So you can filter them. You'll notice my filter, I can click on it and it doesn't work. It's kind of a bug. It's definitely a bug. It doesn't work. Uh, what's also really good and still not working is that you noticed how my format was a bit strange. You know, you had to go and go local drives here, here, here. That's not too bad. The Sony that I'm using uses a different structure and it's harder. Okay, you got to go to clip and miscellaneous and all sorts of other stuff to actually find the video footage. I don't know why they hide these things so well. But anyway, what you can do is you can actually click on your local drive say you know it's a camera a Canon or a Panasonic or a red okay and you can go to this little option go into it go to this and click on like say Panasonic and what it'll do is it'll take you straight there because Premiere Pro knows it knows that you know your P2 camera stores it here 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 and down all these like wormhole of directories and we'll just take you straight there Okay, so it's super handy. Same with uh, Canon, depending on how you're shooting, okay, uh, it will take you directly to that folder rather than having to dig it out yourself and set a favorite. So that's not working at the moment. <laughs> Nothing's working, this one or that one. I've seen conflicting stuff online now that says, hey, Premiere Pro are not supporting this feature anymore. They'd turn it off, I feel like, if they were, but it's been broken for a while. So yours might be working perfectly. So awesome. If <laughs> yours are still broken like mine, Oh, Premiere Pro, come on. But anyway, it's worth mentioning because it's a really handy feature for using the media browser when you are connecting to cameras and like sucking the data straight off, especially when you're going to tie it in with that amazing ingest that we learned in the last video. Actually, quickly to recap, if you are using this to kind of find stuff on your camera, okay, and you are dragging it to your project panel or to your timeline from here, you want to turn on ingest and make sure your ingest settings are set to whatever you want. If you're not using proxies or you are using proxies, Go to project settings, make sure your ingest settings are on. And in my case, let's say we're not doing anything other than copying. Okay, so we're not going to create proxies, we're just going to copy it straight over. Okay, where's it going to go? Not same as project, I'm going to put mine into a folder that I choose. So when I'm previewing on my camera, I'm going to make sure when I add them to my project panel, they're going to copy 
to a place that I choose in my footage folder or wherever it is, that's, you know, it's a nice method and way to work with your camera and your SD card straight from your camera. All right, pros and cons. Uh, pros, you can work with camera files and especially ones that maybe aren't natively viewable from your computer itself, but you can do it from Premiere Pro via the media browser. You can preview stuff before it comes on. It can be copied using ingest. Uh, you can filter when it works <laughs> and you can actually see directory structures um, quickly when that works too. Lot, this is a long video to show us a lot of stuff that doesn't work in Premiere Pro. I didn't make it and I'll come back and video this uh, again when it is working perfectly or gone completely. If these had disappeared, they were turning it off and I was wrong. And the one con for me is that you have to set up the uh, preference, uh, favorites, which makes sense for every project. Uh, not a huge big drama. In all honesty, do I use it every single time? No. Media Browser is perfect when I am the both the videographer and the editor. Okay, so a lot of the time is that. If I am doing a really big project where I'm not the camera person and I'm just doing the editing, sure, that's a great way of doing it. If I'm just doing a small kind of social media video, nah, I just go straight to project and drag from my finder into here because often I'm dealing with stock images. There's not a lot of confusion about what kind of format it is, can it be read? So teeny tiny jobs, no, no media browser. Bigger jobs or stuff that I am filming myself so I need to connect to my camera, media browser is great. All right, that's it. Let's hope they fix it. Hi everyone, uh, this video is about class projects. Okay, uh, not everyone does the class projects, um, but it's up to you. Okay, it's a great way of recapping and rather than just kind of watching and not actually following along. So here's a project that I've set for you. You will find all the class projects in a PDF that is in your exercise files. Okay, there it is, class projects. I'll run through them in videos like this of what you need to do, but yeah, there's a nice little PDF explaining them all separately as well. All right, let me discuss this one. All right, class project time, homework. Okay, I've got a few things for you to do, uh, just to kind of recap some of the things we've done and set up a project for the next part of the course. So it won't take too long. So first of all, let's delete. We've been going on a bit of adventure, learning about proxies and you might have set up a project and things went to the wrong place because we were learning. So what I want you to do is just go clear everything out. So go into your, delete any proxies. Okay, they might be in your footage folder. Okay, uh, so find the tourism island uh, exercise files, go into the project files, delete what's in there, get rid of everything, we can start afresh. Okay, and then same here in the footage. Uh, if you've got any proxies or proxy folders, delete all of that so we can start again. Okay, so create a fresh project. This is the name of the project. Okay, save it. And I want you using the media browser. Okay, you might have been doing this as we go along, so you're pretty much done. Uh, but you may have been just watching. Okay, this is the chance to actually do some stuff with a little bit of editing. Uh, so using the media browser, I want you to ingest the footage. Okay, using these follow, uh, use these proxy settings here. So remember the ingest you can either do when you're setting up the new project or you can do it afterwards under the file project settings. Okay, so I want you to ingest them. I don't want you to copy an ingest. Remember that was something we did. Okay, we're just going to do the create proxies ingesting. Okay, and you'll have to create your own custom uh, preset because one of the things I want you to do is add that text watermark. Okay, so remember you're going to create an encoding preset. Okay, and then our proxy preset. Doesn't have to be uh, Apple ProRes uh, 422. You might be using an earlier version of Premiere Pro and it won't let you. H.264 is fine, anything you want. What I'm really looking for is that you've gone into there and dug around and used it and you. the way I know is that you've kind of added that text uh, for the proxy. So bring in the audio, the footage, the graphics and I want you to do a little bit of editing. You'll end up looking something like this, where is it? Okay, so I want it to be 30 seconds long. Okay, no more. Uh, the audio for the, um, sorry, the music. Okay, there's a couple of files in your exercise files you can pick from. So under, so you bring in audio, footage, and graphics. Okay, we'll use graphics later on. But under audio, there's a couple of bits of uh, music that you get to select from. If you've got your own music or know how to get music, you can use your own totally. Uh, so use one of those. And also there is uh, an Irish blessing to bring in, okay? And in this case, like there's two readings of it in there, okay? So you can kind of see it here in mind. There's the first reading, okay? 
and there's a second reading. I got her to do it differently, just so there's one different kind of emphasis and tone. Pick which one you like. You're going to have to split it up to get the timing to work across the 30 seconds. Okay, in terms of the footage, there is A, B, C, and D. Just cut them up any way you like. Nothing too fancy. There's no like editing score here, just getting a file ready and learning how to use proxies. So do that. Um, import this one called Tourism Z. Okay, but don't use it in your footage. We're going to use that later on in the course. Um, you'll have to balance between the voiceover and the music so that the voiceover can be heard. You'll have to lower that down. So no more than 30 seconds, voiceover, add music, and export using your proxies. Do you remember that? Remember rendering, and there was that little check mark that said uh, export proxies. And that's the file that I'd like to see. Okay, so upload it to Behance or Vimeo or whatever you've got. Don't use YouTube. YouTube mm, get a little bit annoyed when we upload duplicate content and it might hurt your channel if you have a channel. Okay, but Behance or Vimeo is great. Okay, and share the link in the assignments. Okay, so that that's the way to kind of get that assignment up and out. Do these things, make sure you use the proxies and then use the link that you get from Behance or Vimeo and, you know, and add that as your assignment. The other thing to do to get excited about what we're doing is just let me know via social media, like you're getting started. Oh, that's not spelled right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let me know in social media anyone that you use the most and just say, hey Dan, I'm excited. I'm just getting started in Premiere Pro Advanced, looking forward to it, something like that. <laughs> and use this hashtag, getting nerdy in PP. Okay, so that is our little uh, inside joke, or inside, inside and knowledge that I know that you're getting into it and you're excited. So add that to the assignments and this is, you don't have to do this, this is just I don't know. I'm seeing who's out there, who's getting into it. It's taking me a while to produce this course. I love it when people are doing it. Yeah, you can share the video link if you want, or you can just let me know you're getting started. All right, that is it. Let's get on to the next video. Hi there. In this video, we are going to look at render in and out. Okay, all of these ones, we'll look at all these different options here. We'll start with some simple use cases, some more advanced ones. The short answer is it's a way of creating a temporary file quite like a proxy so that your machine can play back uh, some effects generally. Okay, in this case, we've added noise to this and it's gone red. It won't play it back very nicely. We can select it, say sequence, and we can render our effects in and out and it will create a temporary file so that it can play back smoothly. Similar to proxies, there are some differences. Let's get into it. All right, to get started with this one, let's just make sure proxies are turned off. Okay, forget we even did any proxies. Let's pretend we haven't used proxies in this project. And we're gonna look at render in and out. So you use it by adding normally effects, okay, that stress your machine out. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my effects and let's say this, I'm using tourism D, okay, and I'm gonna add some noise. Okay, noise, there it is there. Drag it onto this one. Okay, and up here I'm going to crank it right up and leave it all by default. I'm on full. Let's see if it plays back. It's gone red, which is not good. But let's see if it plays at spacebar. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. <laughs> it's playing back fine. Your machine might not be playing back fine. Okay, so anyway, I tried to stress it out. It didn't work. Um, reasonably new laptop and not a particularly stressful effects. Your mileage may vary. I imagine, I don't know, I don't imagine, but uh, a lot of the time effects will start stressing it out and it won't play back nicely. So you can do one thing, you can start applying it to proxies, but let's say we're not using proxies and we don't want to. It's confusing, it's hard, it's too much for what we're doing. What we can do is just say this red stuff, render in and out. To do it, go up to sequence and go to this one that says render in uh, effects in and out. That's the one we want. And see, that's the shortcut for it. It's the return key rather than the enter key. Have a look at your keyboard. One of them will have that on it. Um, use that one. Mine is next to the square brackets. Okay, so the shortcut. So click that. It's going to render uh, all the effects from the beginning of my um, sequence all the way to the end. The in and out hasn't been set, so it assumes you mean the whole thing. Watch it goes from red to green. Now it'll play back nicely. May God okay. hold you. So that's an alternative for using proxies because what it's done is let's say that you do it plays back fine, but as soon as you add effects your machine just can't play it back. And something like noise like this, you really need to see what it looks like 
to know whether it's good or not. So you do need to, you know, if you crank down the uh, resolution here, you're not going to get that effect, you know, what the noise actually looks like. So hitting the enter key will actually create this preview file on your machine, kind of like a proxy, like a temporary proxy, so that it plays back smoothly. Now, if you've got lots of effects and you just want to render the one that you've kind of worked with, that's why it says up here, uh, in and out, okay, or render effects in and out. So you just set the in point and the out point. So you might drag the um, CTI here, hit I on your keyboard for the in point and over here for the out point. So it's going to ignore maybe a big long sequence and just do this part. Remember, uh, the return key will render it. Okay, let's say that I want to change mine. A couple other ways you can do is, so I'm going to go and change my noise to make it go red again. Do you see there, it's gone red. Okay, I can clear my in and out, goodbye. And I can actually just select something and there's an option in here that says uh, render selection. Okay, so rather than the in and out, I find I use that more. Okay, it's gonna do just what I have selected in here, nothing else. You can select more than one thing. May God hold you in the palm of Way too much, I'm aware, <laughs> I'm aware of that. Okay, but I was trying to s slow down the machine. Way too much noise. Another handy part is the looping playback. Okay, at the moment, um, you know, I've got to kind of restart it. And let's say you were doing some adjustments. What we can do is add this little plus button here and turn on this one. When I say turn on, I mean click, hold, and drag this down to be a little option for us. There's lots of handy stuff in this weird button editor. Okay, just click OK. Okay, and what we can do now is set our in and out point, maybe just a little bit, like this. So I don't need the whole clip done. Okay, I just need a tiny little bit to see how good or bad the noise is. I'm gonna turn on the loop. Okay, so when I make sure it's in the middle there, hit your return key. Make God, make God, make God. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting audio snippet. Okay, but it means that I can, let's mute all of these. Let's mute all these for you so you don't go mad. Okay, can you see? I can start looking at this and then I can go, okay, let's stop it there. Let's adjust this a little bit. Now hit my return key. So it's gonna render it again, the in and out point. Not the whole thing, just there. And that's a quick way to kind of, especially if your fix quite, um, takes a long time to actually implement. Sit in an out point, turn your little loop on, and then know that the shortcut is that return key. Now what was up here, there's like render effects that kind of make sense, right? We've added an effect, okay, not everything else. Render in and out, and render in and out is an interesting one. So not just the effects in and out, but everything. Because you can see along here, this is red, okay, this is yellow. It won't render that. Even if I clear my in and out points, if I hit the return key, it's only gonna render out everything that is red. It assumes anything that is yellow, eh, probably doesn't need rendering. Okay, your machine is fine to do it. So says Premiere Pro. If even this part, okay, your machine's finding it hard to play, oh, there goes my one. <laughs> what you can do, okay, is you can go into here and say, actually, render the yellow stuff as well, because hopefully that'll make a difference. So rendering the in and out, which is the entire thing, Okay, for in and out, watch. It's gonna render all this stuff as well. See, it's going green. That clip, that clip, that clip. It's making a little temporary file, kind of like a proxy, to make sure playback is nice. Oh, look at that. All green and all go. Finally, it started jumping. Okay, other interesting facts about the render in and out is that they're actually files on your machine. You'll find them, okay, uh, when you have, you have to have done your um, render in and out. Okay, either effects or in and out or selection, whether it matters, it creates this folder for you. Okay, and in here are all these MPEGs, okay, that are used as the temporary folder, okay, or the temporary speedy video files that you're um, viewing. Okay, kind of like switches them out, kind of like a proxy, temporarily. I make an adjustment, I have to re-render, this file gets remade again. You can see in here they're quite big files, so if you do like get towards the end of a job, you don't need any of these. Okay, once you've exported, okay, and rendered it for the final time, all of these are here, just little helper files that you can bin. You don't have to back them up. You can just select them all in here and hit delete, or you can do the official way and go sequence and render, uh, delete render files will get rid of everything. If you wanna get rid of just some of them, you've gotta set in an out point. Let's say I wanna keep these, but I wanna delete, I don't know why you wanna do this, but you're probably gonna ask why are there two of them? I've set in an in and out point, so if I say 
uh, delete all render files, everything goes. These ones, that one. But if I just delete the ones that are in between my in and out files, you just want to delete some of them. Click that, click OK. You can see that one went red, but these guys are still there. And you'll notice in my files here, there's still a bunch. So let's do it the other way. Sequence, delete render files, everything goes. That's back to yellow. And in here, just a bunch of leftover XMP files, but all the big, large files, the MP, uh, MPEG4s are gone. Something else to consider about render in and out as well is you can use them for export. Okay, uh, I've deleted all mine, let me render it. Uh, let's render everything. Um, render in and out. Back in a second. Okay, it only rendered my, <laughs> uh, between my in and out. Oh, okay, do it again, see in a second. Render in and out. Okay, so we've created a bunch of like rendered files. You can actually export them. Uh, very similar to what we did with proxies when you want to export your proxies, very same sort of reasons. Quick export, kind of, so a lot of the rendering is already being done. Okay, so you can go to Command M, okay, or File Export M, okay, or Control M on a PC. Okay, and I can say, I don't want to export the proxies, but I want to use these previews. Okay, so that's, Mm, that's the kind of that's what they call it the in and out okay that we've already generated in that file there so it's going to use all of these to do it and it's just going to be super quicker <laughs> you might be asking yourself oh, well what size is it going to be <laughs> let's go and look at how to check and change those preview sizes if you wanted to okay so let's cancel it let's go into sequence sequence settings Note we're going to go to, yes, sequence settings at the top here. Okay, and in here, video, video previews. Okay, that is all linked to that sequence render in and out. Okay, and you can say actually the preview format. Okay, instead of MPEG4, you might be using, I don't know, QuickTime, and you might be using H.264. Okay, uh, and give it a specific size. This is where you get to control what size that preview is. So you gotta decide whether you are bothered you know, whether you plan to export using the previews. If you don't, just leave it as the default. If you don't want a bit more control, it's under sequence settings. Where this gets handy and you want to be really kind of careful with this, well not careful, where you want to be particular about what the sizes are and the dimensions and the codecs, is when you're working on a really big uh, sequence, massive, okay, and what you know you getting towards the end you've got a couple of sections that have been signed off and approved and you know you can render previews okay and let's so there's a couple of bits that need to be fixed and finished okay you can you know make those changes and because you've already done a pre-render you've done a lot of the hard work for some of those large jobs or at least big chunks of the projects okay so that you don't have to then wait to the end in the last minute and try and hit render and spend ages rendering whereas this can save a bit of time if you use this previews trick as a more like a pre-rendering before you get going all right i'm going to leave mine as the default and um, it's really handy as well when you're bringing in uh, after effects files okay rendering in and out okay because the effects that happen with after effects files can be very stressful for premiere pro to try and recreate so if you've got an after effects clip uh put on your timeline here you can you know do sequence render selection and it will render the after effects file okay and it just play back nice and smoothly especially if you're not planning on changing it yourself you just want to see what it looks like we'll cover after effects later on in this course and kind of how to do it and i'll remind you of that little tip again then so rendering is kind of like proxies can you kind of see it's creating a temporary file to make things go faster proxies is a little bit more deliberate it's more like i know that 4k footage at this weird you know, not weird but like 422 or you know uh, some sort of raw file format is just my computer can't do it so i'm going to definitely create proxies and stuff from there whereas rendering in and out is you might have an effect on one clip that is causing trouble or you're just working on a small job and <laughs> proxies blow your mind you can just use render in and out just to make it go fast all right that reminds me actually can you use proxies and render in and out yes do it all the time uh, not so much about the playback, because the playback and this yellow stuff here should be sorted by proxies, but uh, your proxies aren't going to have effects applied to them. Okay, so even though I've got my proxies on, uh, proxies on, okay, if I want to add an effect to it, it still might run really slowly, okay, because the effect itself is very stressful, even on your kind of like smaller size proxy. 
Okay, so if I adjust this, it still might not play back nicely. Okay, no, it's probably going to play back all right. Yeah, it's playing back all right. <laughs> Pretend it's not. Okay, you still, even though you got proxies on, you still do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to do the selection. I'm going to go to my sequence and I'm going to render uh, effects in and out. Okay, which is going to do every effect on the timeline between the in and out point, which is all the way to ends here, on top of my proxy. So proxies are handling this thing here, this part's here, where it's just small, look, lower quality, a better codec, and when it gets to here, it's going to play nicely because it's my proxy underneath and my effect on the top. All right, that was a long one. We are done. There's enough uh, render in and outs. Let's get on to the next video. Hey everyone, we are going to learn what media cache is and what a scratch disk is and how we can bend them to our will and make our editing process faster. So first up, what are the difference between the two? Because they get lumped together all the time uh, because they do a very similar job. Media cache okay, is a bunch of files that uh, Premiere Pro create in the background without you knowing or asking uh, to help it run nice and fast. For example, when I bring in, say, this MP3 here for my music, uh, Premiere Pro goes, I hate MP3s. It, they don't run very fast when they're editing. And it could try and do it with the native MP3, but it would be slow and jumpy and we'd blame uh, Premiere Pro. Okay, but it's a super compressed file. So what it does in the background is it makes another file, okay, in this case, a CFA or something, uh, that it loads and uses. For us, we don't know that that process is happening. Okay, but that file gets created in the background for us to have our editing flow be nice and smooth. Thank you, Premiere Pro. So that happens with a bunch of different files. It creates lots of little mini files in the background just to help us work. Scratch disks are very similar. They're all kind of like supporting files that are in the background, but they're a bit more like purposeful. It's the ones that we make. We made them earlier. Okay, see these ones here? Remember, that's our project file, and we looked at the video previews here. Okay, remember we made these for render in and out. Okay, and there's a bunch of files that get created in here to help us. You can see my timeline is green. Okay, so scratch disks are more like the files that I create for my little previews to help run fast. And media cache is the ones that Premiere Pro don't ask and just do to make the flow go nicely. All right, so that's the difference between media cache and scratch disks. Very similar. Why do we need to know about them? Mainly because they can get big and bloated and especially if we're on a slower machine, it can really slow things down. All right, so why are they slowing me down? Uh, just because they can get really big. Uh, here's my media cache files here. Don't go and try and find this file. <laughs> it's, uh, it's buried deep in the machine and it's very hard to find. I've dug it out here just to show you. You don't need to find it. But you can see here, I've been working on one project for like a day with you and I'm already at 200 megabytes. I've reformatted this machine and cleared it all out. So uh, just for this uh, tutorial, okay. And before I did that, it was up to four gigabytes. Now that's fine on this machine because I've got lots of space, but it can get really big. And if you are on a machine that has, it's either older, slower, or it's full already, media cache clearing can be super useful to kind of speed things up. Let's look at media cache first. All right, to find and manipulate our media cache, uh, go to on a Mac, go to Premiere Pro, go to Preferences, and go to Media Cache. If you're on a PC, go to Edit, and down the bottom here will be Preferences, and go to the same one called Media Cache. So the quick and easy one is just go and say, delete all that media cache, clear it out, don't need it anymore. Um, if you've got a project open, you can only delete the unused cache, so, because it's got a timeline open and it's got stuff that it's using okay it's only going to delete the stuff that hasn't you know it's not being used now that'll happen if you say import an mp3 play it don't like it take it off again it will you know it'll have generated it it'll be sitting in that folder but not used so that's a way of clearing out unused ones and um, have the project close down everything Okay, and go back to preferences to delete everything at once. That's my advice. Okay, because what happens is if you delete everything, don't worry, as soon as a project opens back up, okay, it will generate them all again. Where I wouldn't do this is if I'm working on a really big documentary or a film where actually there's quite a lot of media cache made. Okay, so to open it and to have deleted them all, it's going to take ages to generate. Okay, you'll notice it down here. There's like a little bar that appears, a little blue one. Have you seen it? Okay, when it starts generating things in the background, you never notice it that much. But so that's the time that I wouldn't maybe generate, you know, delete all of them. Okay, so 
just close down your project that will become available. So you cleared out your cache. What else can you do? This one here is super useful. What to do? I don't know why it's not deleting them automatically. Okay, this seems like a really good idea. Okay, let's click OK. It's gonna automatically delete cache files older than 90 days. That seems good. Even 30 days, 60 days, like it's up to your workflow. Okay, like, uh, hey, if you haven't touched it for that long, it's not a big drama to regenerate those uh, media cache files. Or you might decide that you do it this way here. Delete it when the oldest cache files, you know, delete the oldest files when your cache exceeds this much gigabytes. <laughs> that feels like a lot of gigabytes of my hard drive gone. I dove set it to that. I turn it down to like, I don't know, 10 gigabytes. Have a look at your hard drive. How much free do you have? You might decide that you're happy to give Premiere Pro 10 megabytes or sorry, 10 gigabytes and everything after that, it will delete the oldest ones first. Okay, this is the one that I'm more likely use. Okay, and 90 days is fine for me, maybe even shorter. We'll talk about the database location in a second. We'll separate it in a separate video because it relies on you having an extra SSD or hard drive, but I'll do that in the next video. Let's look at what we can do uh, with our scratch disk. All right, let's clear out our scratch disks as well to give us a bit of a performance boost. And it's only gonna give you a performance boost if your machine is lacking hard drive space. Okay, so in this case, it's in a slightly different place. We go to sequence and we go to this one. We've done it before. Uh, delete our render files, we'll get rid of everything. Remember, delete render files in and out will mean only delete the files in between here, my endpoint and my outpoint. I'm using the I and O shortcuts there to set my endpoint and outpoint. But if you just wanna clear everything out, just use that one. All right, let's jump to the next video where we talk a little bit more about scratch disks and media cache and external hard drives. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, this video, we're gonna talk about storing all your files on a separate hard drive. I know, wait, you might not have one, but, um, Listen to this video and decide whether it's right for you. It can be probably, other than proxies, it's gonna be the biggest workflow update that I found in my experience to make things work faster. Even if you've not got a, like, if you've got a slower computer and it's full up, uh, it's gonna be amazing. Even if you've got a pretty good uh, computer like I do, it, it is worth it. It makes everything run and preview and render a lot faster. And I promise we will get on to some more exciting Premiere Pro <laughs> I don't know, features soon. I don't know, I feel like productivity is all about I don't know, getting our system working fast and our workflow nice before we start jumping into the stressful parts of our kind of super features. I totally should have started with something a little sexier than <laughs> proxies and media cache. Anyway, let's move on. Now, keeping all of your files on a second hard drive, um, if you've got like say a desktop style computer, either Mac or PC, often you can put an extra hard drive in it, okay, which is good. If you're like me working on a laptop, there's no room for an extra hard drive, so I'm using an external hard drive. And as long as it's fast enough, it works nearly as good. Okay, so um, just make sure when you are picking a hard drive that you're gonna shift this onto, it needs to be super fast. I'm gonna give you my recommendations for today with my knowledge. I'm not a hard drive expert, but you need to, it needs to be an SSD, which is a solid state drive. But who knows, next year there might be, I don't know, a floppy state drive, <laughs> I don't know. But just have a research about what the best speeds are for your particular computer and your operating system. So at the moment, SSD uh, with a USB-C, or if you've got a Mac, Thunderbolt 3 is super fast. So. Um, so PC, you're probably at USB-C 3 point something at the moment. So just find a nice fast hard drive. It doesn't have to be huge, okay? It just has to be fast. And what goes over there? So I find everything over there is great. Even like the project file, it doesn't have to be. And the trick is, is just leaving your hard drive to only run uh, Premiere Pro. So everything like your project files, your source files, which is like the videos and audio you're using should be on this extra hard drive all the media cache, okay, which we talked about in the last video, and your scratch disk, all on this external hard drive, or the second hard drive. That frees up uh, your kind of the hard drive that came with your computer to only run Premiere Pro, and that sort of balance works really well. So for your project file, to get it over there, it's easy. Just file save as, and put it onto your external hard drive, okay, and just use that as your way you're working, okay. And same with all the raw files, all the exercise files that we've got today, just move them onto that other hard drive. In terms of the scratch disk and media cache, they're pretty easy to change as well. So let's do that. I'll show you kind of a work through. 
Um, so again, let's get to that media cache on our Mac. It's uh, Premiere Pro, Preferences, Media Cache. And remember on a PC, it's under Edit, Preferences, Media Cache. And all you do is say both of these places, okay, you want both the cache files and the database to be on the external drive. So let's go to Browse. Let's find my external drive. I've got a fresh one for you. Um, I'm going to make this one. It's going to be my media cache. Media cache. <laughs> it's a hard word to spell, is it? I don't know. It is for me. <laughs> Let's click it in there. Okay, and that's it. We'll do the same thing for here. It's going to go to the right place. And it just means, oh, it's going to say, hey, I've already got some media cache for this open document. Do you want me to move it or delete it? Mm, let's delete it. Start fresh. Okay, and the cool thing about this is that from now on, it will always be over there. Okay, obviously there is a trouble when you are out and about. You can't work on your file unless you bring your external hard drive with you. So there are some compromises, but I do my video editing at home plugged in. I do bits of editing out and about, and I just gotta remember to take my um, hard drive with me. So there might be some projects that end up living on your hard drive, you know, your main hard drive, and some that end up on the external drive because it is a lot faster working. Okay, so let's click OK. In terms of the scratch disks, okay, remember with those other files like the render in and outs? You can put those over there as well, and they are great over there. Uh, to move them, they're slightly different. They're in your project settings, okay, because scratch disks are set uh, per project because they kind of follow along the project file. Remember, they're kind of here. Where are they? <laughs> I'm gone. There. So these uh, scratch disks follow along often with a Premiere Pro project file is. So this is a bit of a pain. You've got to remember every single time you set up a new project to make sure the scratch disks are set up to that external drive. For me, I've already got this set up. So how do I do that? I go to file, I go to project settings, and I go to scratch disks. Okay. And I can say, I want you to be over on my Lacey drive, and I'm going to make a new folder called scratch disk. Okay, and it's gonna go in there. And you go browse, browse. Okay, it just remembers the last place you went. And it's gonna rebuild all those preview files. You can see it's already building them. Okay, you do that. And now every time I do a render, okay, render in and out, it will end up on that external drive, leaving the internal hard drive to run Premiere Pro in my external drive, as long as it's nice and fast to uh, do the data transfer between the software and the actual physical files, as physical <laughs> as files can get. Um, we did that for an existing file for new files as part of your uh, workflow. So if you've got a new project, you will find it there. Scratch disks. Looks the same. Just You can see that it's already browsed out to my scratch disk. Okay, so it remembers the last thing I did. All right, so that's it. Uh, you don't have to have an external drive or a separate drive, but if you do, keep your project files, uh, your source files, your media cache and your scratch disk on them and let your kind of internal hard drive run Premiere Pro and it's a great little workflow. All right, on to the next video. I hope it's more exciting than <laughs> disk cache, Dan. Hi there, in this video, we're gonna look at preferences. I know in the last video I said it's gonna be exciting stuff. This is exciting. It's nerdy exciting for Premiere Pro. We're gonna look at the preferences that are actually worth changing, not just all the preferences. Now most of these are just personal preferences and personal peeves of mine. <laughs> and to change them all makes the whole experience nicer, for me at least. Uh, the first one is in your project window. If you open up a bin, it opens up in a separate tab. Okay, and then you're like, back to this one, and you've got this one open, and then, oh, it's a big mess down here. So what I prefer to do, I'm gonna close these down, is uh, Premiere Pro Preferences General. On a Mac, it's Edit Preferences General. Okay, and I like that when I double click a bin, it just opens in place. Click OK. Okay, it means now when I open up footage, that just that same panel is updated. And I can go back and into this next one and back. Thank you very much. You might not like that. Next preference. This one here is just super useful and it's not on by default at the moment. Uh, go to back into your preferences, go to auto save and turn this one, it says save backup project onto Creative Cloud. I know it's not on at the moment, so just turn that on. You might, these seem to work good, automatically back it up every 15 minutes um, up until a maximum of 20 versions, that's fine. But also save it to the cloud. Why not? It's useful. Um, let's click OK. Premiere Pro doesn't crash nearly as much as it used to. Um, you will find them. Okay, let me find it for you. There it is. 
So here's my Creative Cloud in here under, so I've just logged into creativecloud.adobe.com, my work, and you will find under Synced Files, Premiere Pro 15, whatever version you're at, auto saves, and it will just back them up in here as well. So that there, if things go wrong, you can find your project files. Yours corrupts, so you lose it. It's backed up here as well. Or there'll be 20 versions going backwards. Super useful, especially if somebody else is working on your project and you're just kind of sharing the project file. All right, next preference. For those of you who are using a computer that is not quite up to Premiere Pro spec and it reminds you that every time it loads, it says, hey, you don't have the right machine. <laughs> you're like, I know, I know, and it works good enough, so I ignore it. You can go and turn that off. Okay, preferences, general, and say, stop showing me compatibility issues every time you start up. Once is fine, <laughs> don't keep reminding me of my slow Puru laptop. It doesn't fix them, <laughs> just the warning dialogues. All right, next, preference. Now this next one is, I'm not sure if this is on by default anymore. I know it was definitely on by default and it was a pain that I had and a lot of my students had, so uh, it might be off by default, we'll check. And um, so what happens by default is wherever I move my CTI, can you see, it actually selects, uh, selects the clip underneath and changes up here in your fixed controls and I hated that. Okay, uh, what we can do is you can go to sequence and say actually don't, selection does not follow the playhead. Okay, I've got something selected, my playhead doesn't kind of keep jumping around. It may or may not be on and you may or may not hate it. You might love it and you may be like, man, I'm gonna turn that back on because look, it selects it every time you move. All right, these preferences are personal preferences. <laughs> All right, next one. All right, don't forget to turn it off. All right, now next one. All right, this next shortcut is for you, those of you like me who use a mouse with a scroll wheel to do your editing and you end up doing this. Whoop. <laughs> Everything is up hiding all the time. You're like, oh, how do I get it back? Why can't I see anything? Uh, so the scroll wheel by default vertically scrolls up and down the timeline. And if you find that frustrating like I do, go to Premiere Pro uh, Preferences. Remember, edit preferences on a PC. Go to timeline and say, actually, the, the timeline mouse scrolling be horizontal. That's way more useful. Let's click OK. And now... <laughs> <laughs> I've lost them. <laughs> you come back down, you there. But now, okay, your scroll wheel goes back and forth. Okay, so I find that helpful. Um, and you can do some other things, like you can still go up and down by holding the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and just hover above the different ones. So you can still disappear them and scrub up and down your timelines. Another little shortcut, if you are a scroll wheel a person, uh, hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC and it zooms in, in and out using the scroll wheel. Okay, so command up and down now, uh, option to zoom in and out. And the regular old, just using the mouse with nothing, the scroll wheel with nothing held down will go left and right. Now the question you didn't ask and probably didn't even think about, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you anyway, is what mouse is he using? Uh, so what is the best mouse for video editing? Mm, for me, I use this one. It's not the best mouse, it's the best mouse for me because uh, it's called the Logitech M M720. It's called Triathlon, I think. Why? Because I'm just not a full-time video editor. I do as much graphic design as I do web design, as UX design, as teaching, so I need a mouse that can do a bit of it all. And this is a nice good compromise. It's got some extra programmable buttons, some good scroll wheel functions. You can connect it to different devices like my phone and my iPad, which is crazy cool. But, and it's not super expensive. If you are a full-time editor, which a lot of you will be, you might wanna consider some of the surface controls. Okay, so type in surface controls and see what's out there. Like there is an amazing array of surface controls. Just make sure it's compatible with Premiere Pro. You can see there's some crazy cool things you can kind of set up to get your workflow going. Plus, you look like a serious legit video editor if you've got something like this on the table. But for me, my desktop service is super valuable. I've got no room for it and I've tried it before and I just it ends up in the drawer of junk that I thought I needed, but I don't. But I know for sure if I was a full-time editor, I'd try and look like this guy. <laughs> All right, uh, on to the next preference. This next uh, preference setting, it's less of a preference and like turning off two preferences that are meant to be helpful, but for me, run into too much trouble. The first one is, well, it's snap and set in and out points. There are shortcuts on your keyboard that somehow magically I hit all the time. I never want to use them. You know, I, I never do it on purpose, but uh, the S key, okay, which is snap, 
you can, there's the icon version of it there. I always turn it off and it stops snapping and you're like, oh, why aren't you snapping anymore? Why isn't that lining up? And you're like, oh, it's because snap's off. And you're like, where is snap? Know that there's an icon there now, which you probably never looked at before. And you go like, uh, snap, and you turn it off. So I'm going to turn that off as a shortcut. You don't have to. I do. The other one that is, uh, I don't know, I do it all the time by mistake is I've got something selected and I'm looking down to kind of resize my um, timeline, you know, because I'm zoomed in too far. I want to zoom out. And what I do is I end up sitting in and out points because <laughs> instead of the backslash, which I want, I click the forward slash. And I'm like, oh, not that. I'm like, how do I get rid of that again? And I right click and clear in and out. And then I hit the backslash key to fill the timeline. So I'm going to turn both of those off. Let's go to edit. No, on a Mac, it's under Premiere Pro and under keyboard shortcuts. On a PC, it's under edit keyboard shortcuts. Okay, I'm going to disable a couple of them. So I want to find snap. Okay, I just typed it in there. I want to say you are gone. So when I hit S now, it's not going to do anything. And the other one is I want to uh, set in and out points. Where is it? Scroll, 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 scroll. Nope, it's not called set in and out points. Wait there. All right, you're back. It's called mark selection. Good preparation, Dan. This one here, goodbye. Uh, you might love those. Leave them in there. But know that if there are ones in there, you can turn them off. And the cool thing about setting these preferences and keyboard shortcuts is that because Premiere Pro is this like subscription service and there's all this cloud stuff under like preferences and under uh, sync settings, it will sync your keyboard shortcuts changes and your workspaces and the preferences so that when you get a new computer or format it or change to another computer or start working, you know, internally at some other company you can log in with your uh, username and id and it will bring them all across and you can continue your amazing flow one of the nice things about premiere pro and like that creative cloudy thing all right all right for this next trick um we are going to look at the timeline and the way this thing snaps it by default it doesn't snap to anything okay now you can hold down the shift key okay uh, and it will, while you're dragging your CTI, snap to everything. So that's a handy shortcut, okay? But I like it on by default, okay? So you can go to Premiere Pro, Preferences. Remember, PC, it's Edit, Preferences. Go to Timeline, and go to the one that says this one. <laughs> they all look the same, <laughs> and they're moving around. So you might have to look for it, Snap Playhead. So that's just going to have it on by default, only when Snap is enabled. So you can turn it off by just clicking this. Not the S key, because we just binned that one. But it means that they're going to snap to this. I find it's more useful for my flow. Try it for a little while. You might hate it. Um, you can turn it off if you want to be a bit more exact, holding the shift key down. That's what I do. There's a lot of like getting it to the right point and then using the razor tool or some of the other shortcuts. Okay, and by default, it just snaps. It's up to you. Now, I'm going to cover a few shortcuts in this course. Actually, loads of them. It's the advanced course. What I'll do is I will produce a shortcut sheet that you can print out. It'll be in your exercise files, okay? Obviously, hopefully in there. It doesn't exist yet because I'm still making the course, but it'll be in there in your exercise files. You can print them off. You should write them down, but print them off now and you can kind of circle the ones that you think are great. All right, let's get on to the next video. Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace something that's already in your timeline with some new footage. Uh, but in just a general note, we've switched to a new category. We're going to be looking at timeline kind of editing tricks now. Uh, so yeah, this is the stuff. We've kind of done the things that help speed up our computer. Okay, now we're going to look at the things that speed you up as an editor. Okay, we want to replace clip D with something new. Either we've decided, or the client's come back and said, don't like this one, can you try something else? But we've done a bit of work to it. We've got cuts on it, we've got an effect, in this case noise, and maybe Lumetri color grading, anything. Okay, so we can switch it out easily by finding it in my project panel. In this case, it's Tourism Z. Click, hold, drag, drag, drag. Okay, and then hold down the Option key on a Mac, the Alt key on a PC, and just kind of like dump it over the top. And you'll notice, give it a sec, it has matched the cuts, it has taken on the effects, in this case noise, anything else that is applied, simple, quick and easy switch. It will work for any type of footage, either images, audio, anything you like. There's a long way, you can select it, make sure it's selected over here in the bin as well, or potentially open in the source monitor, okay? And then you can do it the long way by going right click and go to replace clip with either the bin, if you've got it selected, or with the source monitor which is 
look there, I've got there. <laughs> okay, and it will switch it. Or just hold down the Alt key for a PC or the Option key for a Mac. Again, this will be in your shortcut sheets. Not every single thing I'll cover in the course will be in there, but a lot of the hold downy, hard to remember shortcuts will be there. Remember, circle the ones that are important. You don't have to remember them all. All right, next video. All right, how was that? Uh, are you feeling more like a powerful, positive video editor? Uh, I hope you are. If you are, like the video, okay, for me, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and also just a reminder that if you like this video, there's plenty more. Uh, this is just the first 16 videos of 141 videos for the full course called Premier Pro Advanced. There's an essentials course as well. Uh, so there'll be a link here to get there or there'll be links in the description. So if you can't remember the last time you went through Premiere Pro and caught up with all the updates and all the features, join me in the course and let it be your one-stop shop for professional development and upgrade for yourself because you're worth it. I might see you in the course. Bye.